Hi, and welcome to our webinar. My name is Tom, and I'm a member of the application engineering team here at Chelsea Communications. Today we're going to talk about a paper we recently published where we implemented a high-performance network for Kubernetes using Chelsea Virtual Functions, or VFs. Kubernetes, also known as K8S, is an open source system for provisioning and managing pods, which are a group of containers, across multiple hosts. Kubernetes integrates with networking, storage, telemetry, and other services to provide a comprehensive container infrastructure. What is a container? Containers are lightweight versions of a virtual machine that hold together all the components and functionality required for an application to run. Their small, flexible, decoupled nature allows them to be deployed easily across bare metal systems as well as public, private, and hybrid cloud environments. In this webinar, we will show, using a Chelsea Ethernet adapter, how to provide high-performance, low-latency networking for the containers in a multi-host Kubernetes environment. One of the key features used to implement this, this network is Single Root I.O. Virtualization, or SRIOV. This technology segments a single network device into multiple virtual functions to make them available for direct I.O. to the container. Chelsea T6 adapters support up to 64 virtual functions utilizing an embedded virtual switch. Before we start with the task at hand, I would like to take a few moments to introduce you to Chelsea in the event you have not heard of us before. Chelsea has been around since 2000. We are a leader in the area of high speed converged network Ethernet adapters with over 1.5 million ports shipped. We specialize in offloading software onto silicon that enables higher performance lower power consumption, and fabric convergence, all while requiring lower power, cheaper CPUs in the host. Our primary markets in the past have been in storage and streaming, but we are moving more and more into server, storage arrays, and cloud markets. We have design centers located in Sunnyvale, California, and Bangalore, India. For this webinar, we will be using this card, the T62100CR. This card supports two 100 gig ports. The heart of the adapter lies underneath the heat sink, namely the T6ASIC. The T6 is our sixth generation custom designed ASIC. The T6 is a high performance purpose built protocol processor, along with the two ports that are capable of running at one 10, 25, 40, 50, and 100 gig, the chip has an embedded layer 2 switch that is instrumental in the ability to support SRIOV. The ASIC also supports a TCP offload engine, or TOW, along with an onboard crypto processor. The interface of the host is a PCIe Gen 3 with 16 lanes. This slide outlines the current portfolio of Chelsea adapters. It includes flavors of the 100 gig adapters that support offload using external memories on the card, as well as those that don't. There are versions of the T6 card that also support T25 gig and T6 cards built on the OCP3 form factor. Lastly, there's a card built on our previous generation T5A6, which supports four 10 gig ports. Chelsea offers a very extensive software portfolio, including drivers for Linux, Windows, FreeBSD, Solaris, VMware, and macOS, among others. As you can see, Chelsea offers an extensive product offering with some exciting new products coming in 2025. But now, on to our demonstration. This is the test configuration that we are using. The cluster consists of a single master node and two worker nodes. Each of the worker nodes are equipped with a Chelsea T62100CR card. 
Our master node has a single Xeon E5-1660 6-core processor running at 3.7 GHz. The server has 64 GB of RAM and running RHEL 9.2 with the 5.14 kernel. The nodes are also running CRIO, which is an open source product that enables Kubernetes to use any OCI compliant runtime for running pods. The worker nodes are running two Xeon E5-2567 processors with 128 gigabytes of RAM. They are also running RHEL 9.2 with the 5.14 kernel. As mentioned previously, the nodes have the Chelsea T62100CR adapter in each using the Chelsea Unify Wire Driver Kit version 3.19.0.2. In order to implement this solution, several Kubernetes plugins are required. The first is Flannel, which provides a Layer 3 IPv4 network to the pods. Another is Multis, which enables attaching multiple network interfaces to the pods. And lastly, a plugin is required to support SIROV in this configuration. Testing will be done using a pod based on Rocky Linux 8.6 and using iperf 2.2 to generate and receive the traffic. So that highlights the hardware and software components of our test environment. Also included in this configuration is a 1 gigabit network that is used for the management network for the cluster. We will now show the configuration of the cluster and then the running of the test. The steps shown in this video are documented in the white paper published on Chelsea.com. Here we are running commands on the master node that will need to be run on the worker node as well. First thing is to disable swap and then install the traffic control utility package. Enable IP forwarding and setting up other network settings. Set cell Linux to permissive. And install the CRI-O service. Now we're repeating the operations on worker 1 and worker 2. Next we initialize Kubernetes on the master node. We're installing CNI plugin and then next we'll install flannel on the master node. Show that flannel is now running. And now we join worker nodes to the cluster using cube admin. admin.
We now see that worker one and worker two are a part of the cluster. And now we're going to work on creating the virtual functions in order to establish the 100 gig link between the two pods. Using mod probe, we mod probe the CSGB4 driver and then we configure SRROV numVFS. And you can see as the last statement there, we've created a uh, vir virtual function that can be used for the SRIOV connection. And we repeat the same for worker two. Now we're getting ready to create the pods so that the, we can run the test. We see if we have created the pod and we have an added interface. We're doing the same thing on worker two. We're showing now that the two pods are up and running. Test pod 1 is node worker 1. Test pod 2 is on worker 2. Interfaces are up and running on both worker 1 and worker 2. So we're just about ready to run the test. Now we're starting an iPerf test with eight threads running with a 128K I.O. size. And we see with running all eight threads, we attain line rate of 98.3, 98.5 gigabits per second aggregate uh, between the two uh, containers. Looking also at the Q stats, we see that they're incrementing and showing that there's activity there. Once again, we see the uh, line rate of 98.3 gigabits per second. So in the test we just witnessed, we saw that the connection between two pods was able to attain line rate at, at an I.O. size of 128 kilobytes. Looking at this graph, we see a sweep of various I.O. sizes between 64 bytes and 512 kilobytes. The connection between the pods reaches a line rate in an I.O. size of just 4K. CPU utilization is impressive as well. The received CPU utilization is basically flat once the I.O. size reaches 1K. While we see CPU utilization of 35% at 1K on the transmit side, it reduces to around 12% at the 64K I.O. size. So the conclusion is we achieve a line rate of 98 gigabits per second with a maximum of 35% host utilization on the transmit side, which reduces down to about 12 to 13%. There are plenty of resources available to deploy more containers. Are you looking for more info? Go to www.chelsio.com.
For sales questions, go please email sales at chelsea.com. And for any technical questions or questions on this webinar, please email support at chelsea.com. And thanks for watching.